and welcome to Build. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper, and today we're talking about Dead to Me, the latest binge worthy show from Netflix. It follows Jen, a widow, who meets a free spirit named Judy at a support group after they've both suffered a loss. The two become fast friends, but a shocking secret threatens to rip them apart. Today I'm sitting down with Christina Applegate, Linda Cardellini, and creator Liz Feldman. But first, here's a trailer from Dead to Me. Just heat it up at 300 and leave it in for 35 minutes. Thanks, Karen. It's my take on Mexican lasagna. Great. Jeff and I can't imagine what you're going through. Well, it's like if Jeff got hit by a car and died suddenly and violently. <laughs> like that. Well, you get that dish back to me whenever yep. you can. Welcome to Friends of Heaven. Looks like we have some new people here today. I'm Judy. Jen. I hope this is what we are. Can I give you a hug? No. Okay. I lost my fiance eight weeks ago. It was really sudden. <laughs> Since Ted died, I haven't been sleeping. Not at all. Hey, I'm off all night. Feel free to call me and we can not sleep together. Hi. Did you get it? Is that him? No, that's my other husband. Oh, and another one? Then you're fine. Are you in bed? Yeah. What are you wearing? A pair of sweatpants. Ooh, slower. Huh? You're a weird person, Judy. <laughs> a lot just every time i see a person-sized dent in the front bumper of a car but it must be hard to be alone in that big house without steve my guest house is open be nice having you there boys this is judy hey dad's here he thinks that the burn is his dead father maybe it is him okay it's weird her being in there what holy fuck you don't even know her she could be a crazy person we're looking for Judy Hale. Why are you looking for Judy? Let's just say that wherever Judy goes, chaos tends to follow. Is this some kind of game that you're playing? There's a lot of shit you don't know. Grief does some weird shit to people. I know you. You're good. Crazy or not. a criminal into your home. She's the only person who has been here for me that doesn't make me feel like I am failing at everything. Oh, no! I've got a widow running around town like a white wine vigilante. Fuck her. Fucking love you. I'm feeling good. I miss you, baby. Just wanted to say that. Okay, fine. Just trying a thing. Fuck you too. Put your hands together for Liz Feldman, Linda Cardellini, and Christina Applegate. Hi guys, welcome. Hi. I'm so happy to chat with each of you about this. Um, I got access to the first season and I binge watched it. So I said that in my intro and I really meant it. I watched seven of the 10 episodes. Uh, I was like fully enthralled. There's like this perfect balance of humor and darkness that I think is so hard to get and this show gets it. Um, so Liz, I wanna start with you, the creator. Thank you. Uh, where did this story come from? Um, you know, it came from a pretty personal place, though it's not at all autobiographical, but I was going through my own grief um, at the time. My, uh, I had just turned 40, which can be sort of its own uh, weird moment in life. You know, you're sort of staring down your own mortality. And on the day I turned 40, um, uh, sadly, my cousin passed away, and he was not that much older than me. And suddenly I found myself in a really dark place, and um, a lot of what you see in terms of the way they're dealing with their grief is, you know, is, is through my own lens. And uh, that's kind of where it came from. How was this the pitch? Because you're like, I want to do a comedy about grief. Were they like, yes? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, the pitch was, it, it, I, was I, I, I wasn't really focused on trying to make it funny. I just knew that if I cast the right people who were just hilarious and brilliant actresses with Christina and Linda, that, that the, com the comedy would come. Mm -hmm. But to me, I look at life through a comic lens, I can't help it. I'm a comedian. So even when the, the darkest things happen, I can't help but like focus on like the one weird thing. Yeah. You know, like at a funeral, I, I just I'm fixated on like the rabbi's shoes. Yeah. You know, things like that. So I, that's just the way I look at life. It, it helps me get through it. I think, you know, for a lot of people, humor is a coping mechanism in, in everyday life, but especially when you're in a dark moment. That's one thing I love about the series is it really does show the different ways that people cope with grief. And I want, we'll get into that a little more later. Uh, Christina, I want to jump to you. I, I read that, you know, you had sort of taken a little break from acting and you wanted to find the perfect project to kind of get back in. So why was Dead to Me the thing that you wanted to be a part of? Liz, <laughs> stop. But I keep going. Love her. Um, I love you well, too. but no, I mean, first and foremost, Liz, because I, if, it, if I'm going to stop 
you know, being able to take my kid to school every day and pick her up, then I want to be around people that I really respect and adore and love. And um, she had written this amazing script of something that I had never really seen, something quite like that. And um, oddly, originally, I thought that they wanted me for Judy. Um, and Liz was like, no, you're Jen. <laughs> yeah, I was like, <laughs> no, was she's like, basically you. Yes. yes, so basically, yes. I mean, it just, yeah, it's definitely the better fit for, <laughs> for me. Tell us who Jen is. Oh, gosh, Jen. <laughs> Who is Jen? <laughs> no, I know who Jen is. Um, Jen is a woman who just has lost her husband, and we, we meet her three months after the, the, the death of her husband's sudden death. And um, she, she does not deal with grief the way that, you know, society would like her to be dealing with grief. So she has an incredible amount of rage, but it's the only way that she can, like, let out the steam of all the pain that she feels. And you... you um, you know, everyone in her life is trying to put a timeline on her grief. Mm -hmm. And that's that can also be very frustrating for someone who is drowning um, in, in pain. And so that's, she sounds like a really uplifting character. Yeah, it's hilarious. Um, it's hilarious. <laughs> but that's who, that's who she is. And, and with that, because it's, the humor does, can, does come out of that. I mean, rage can be really hilarious. And you, yeah. you nail it <laughs> so well. Right. Uh, so what kind of work do you have to do? Because you, she is in an angry place often. Uh, so for you as an actor, how fun is that to kind of get to do that every day? <laughs> Just rage out on There's, people. Don't look at me like that, you, you a-holes. <laughs> how fun um, was it? What? It was, it was good. No, it was good. It was good. <laughs> it's, it wasn't hard right. to do. Cool. I love that. I love that so much. No, I mean, of course it's hard. It's like, you know, we're not asked to, like, do these scenes that, like, you know, and then she cries. It's like, and then she's literally a raw emotion on the floor vomiting all her guts out of you know <laughs> of pain so it was you know it's it was challenging but also incredibly cathartic for me and linda when you first got this script what was your reaction when you read through it i loved it i loved that the characters there were two strong female leads mm -hmm. um i loved the perspective that the friendship came from i loved the idea that you know sometimes when you get a script the the female characters, you could sort of exchange their lines. And that is not the case in this at all. You know when Judy is talking and you know when Jen is talking, they're so clearly defined. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, even though they're total opposites, they mesh and they, they have this very intimate relationship mm -hmm. that you can't help but root for them to continue to be friends despite all odds. That was my exact sentiment. I was like, it's oh, so it's so hard to right. find. Yeah. <laughs> it's so hard to find like friends as an adult. And so when you find somebody really special, it's like this huge life changing thing. And then as you watch the show, you're like, I know they probably shouldn't be friends, but like I get it, you know. So let's talk about that a little bit. Who is Judy first? Uh, how is she different than Jen? I play Judy Hale. She's a very um, glass half full person, and life keeps just throwing the glass of water in her face. Uh, so <laughs> she. She is really, um, she's a different character than I've ever played. There's no cynicism in Judy. She's completely hopeful. She thinks of herself as a, as a giver. Um, and I think when you watch the show, unfortunately, that can be misinterpreted as selfish. But to her, it doesn't come from that place at all. She doesn't think too much. She's not like me in real life. I'm an overthinker. And she is not like that at all. She's very um, present and sometimes makes uh, very illogical decisions, but to her, they make complete sense. But to the outside, they, they don't seem to, they're not in her own best interest, let's just say. Um, so she's, she's very complicated, and, and the, the wonderful thing about the role is I get to play many things at once. Um, she's not, there's nothing, even though Judy's a straightforward person in some ways, there's nothing straightforward about her. Um, what you see is what you get, but it's also what, what you which you don't know, you don't know yet. So, I, I mean... Oh, I like that. Well, thanks. It rhymes, too. Yeah, it did. I'm, it's song, right? I'm interested, how does that affect your performance of her? Because she does have, you know, these secrets, and she's somebody who, like, every episode, we're peeling back a layer. But you already know the ending at the beginning, so how does that affect how you approach her story and her performance? Um, one thing I loved about this, the script was in, in the first episode, there are things revealed that maybe in other projects, they would have been the, the entire reveal. I think that the wonderful thing about the show is that there are so many things that are revealed throughout, small and large. And for Judy, um, without giving anything away, she always has this itch to do this one thing. 
And so it can happen at any time for her. And it's, it's more about her fighting the instinct to say something um, or do something that she feels is right, although she shouldn't. And Liz, talk about the balance of having these two characters who are so dynamic, so different, having them play back and forth. Like, what was your thought process? And because I, I just love both women equally. Um, Thank you. And their performances are stellar. But I loved it because I could see myself in each of them and my friends. So what was the process like for you? Well, I love hearing that. Yeah. Um, it's The process for me was, again, I said, this isn't an autobiographical show at all. But I realized about halfway through writing the pilot, I was like, oh, they're both me. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're both me. You know, I have this sort of, I have a darkness, you know, as, as pretty much every comedian and comedy writer does, and as we all do. And, you know, the, this person who has anger and, you know, for me, I, I don't feel like I can express it in my real life. And I realized I started writing this character who can and does. And, you know, then the Judy character is, and we call her sometimes Judy Sunshine. Like, I am, like, I just want everybody to be okay. I'm, that's, that's very much, like, from my own personality. And, you know, if, so for me, I, I, you know, love writing female characters um, because for me, they're, they're just characters. And um, uh, I'm, I'm a person, you know, and I, and I, I really set out to, to write a show that had two strong women and to show how different women can be and how we're not, we're not always the same. We're not always just type A and, you know, we're not always a ditz. We're, you know, so many other uh, better things. And I think hopefully that's what these two characters uh, deliver. Absolutely. Let's talk about your, your chemistry. Did you guys know each other before this? No. Really? No. So you just met when? We went to lunch with Liz and Jessica Albaum from uh, Gloria Sanchez, who's our executive producer mm -hmm. and the lady who brought us all together, That's basically. Right. And I have known Jessica since 2004. You've known her for many years. I've many years. Knew you. Yep. Um, but never had met Linda. And so we met like a week or so before table read, I think, or something like that. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. and that was it. Wow. And we just talked about life and motherhood and anxiety and <laughs> stuff. Didn't really talk about the show much. Really, just talked about no. It was like just a bunch of friends sitting just around immediately. Around and yeah, it really yeah. It yeah, really was. we immediately just bonded, and it was it was good. I just knew that we, um, in order to play these characters and play the things that we had to go through, we we both needed to feel really safe with each other as friends and as actresses, because um, we would have to, we had to really go go bye-bye, you know what I mean? And you can't, you have to like, it, you can't, you can't tap into that if you don't feel safe. So um, it was really nice to, to have someone that I felt safe with. And with Liz too, who created an environment that made us feel safe and supported and, and held up because of the fact that we did really have to go to go to some places that, you know, we probably didn't, you know, want to. <laughs> Are there any life. specifics, like, work you guys did together, conversations you had about these two women to kind of help you lock into who they were when you were in scenes together? I, knew, I mean, I, I knew who Jen was, you know, yeah. for me. Um, I don't think we talked about it much. Uh, no, but when we would be doing a scene and then we would just continue doing the scene after what was done, after what Liz had written, written we would just yeah. keep going. And a lot of that, Called by the way, is in the show. They did yeah. some incredible improv, which was, you know, just, just right spur of the moment. They just kept going. We didn't yell cut. And some of those moments are my favorite moments in the show, and it really is them. And just a, a quick anecdote to sort of, I think, answer what you're asking is that uh, when we were shooting the pilot, there's a scene on the beach uh, where they're just sort of sitting, and they're having sort of their first, like, real intimate moment as friends. And we, you know, shot that over a very long night. And, you know, every time, you know, the director yelled cut or they'd do a new setup for different lighting, they just sat there together, like, under one blanket. And we were like, what are they doing? And they, they were just talking. And they were just, like, chatting. And they would, sometimes they'd be laughing. And we'd be like, what are they talking about? And, you know, the mics were off. And they just spent the whole night, like, like those two people. And I think what you watch in the pilot are really these two incredible women becoming friends. Yeah. You guys have both been acting since you were teens, kids. Do you think that plays into just that comfort you're able to find on set and knowing that the other person sort of has that experience? I think I think having been in this for so for both of us for so long, there isn't like um, we don't um, possess that competition thing that I think a lot of younger actresses, you know, there's everyone wants the brass ring, you know, like no, it's me and I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna stand out. And I think we've been in this. You know what I'm saying? And it's true. I mean, and they, and they do, and they don't care, and they're not listening when they're seen because they need to be the one who's winning, and they need to have, and it's not, not all of them. It's just, I think that growing up in this and the fact that we are grown A women, you, you know, ass. grown ass women, um, we don't have that. And we also know that you're, 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 you're never as good as the, per if 
the person in front of you. You have to like, you have to have a, a tennis match. It has to be someone who can hit that ball back to you. And so you have to be supportive and listening and trusting. And I think that's what, having grown up in this, we just, I don't think we have this because we've been doing this so long, you know? We're not fighting for our, our, our spot. No, and also <laughs> it just is Well, I mean, at least I'm not. I don't, um, I don't know about also, her. I don't know I about think, her, but uh, um, <laughs> here we go again. Okay. No, I agree. I agree. I think, and also I feel like we, when we entered into the project, everybody told me, you're going to love Christina. I said, that's great. And when I met with Liz, she was like, I only want to work with people that I like. And I said, that's great, because to me, you only have a finite number of days on this earth. You're going to spend a lot of time at work together. I want to work with people that I trust, that I think are great, and that I like being with, that I want to, you know, if I don't get to drive my kid to school, that I get to go somewhere where I'm being treated kindly and treating others kindly. And I feel like we found like-mindedness right away. I feel like we found like a vulnerability that we recognize, but also a strength that we recognize for being in this business for so long. Yeah. So, and I think that it was, you know, Liz and Jessica really put us together and knew that, that we would get along. Yeah. Well, I hoped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true, you never know. You never know, but yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, luck does play a part and they just had incredible chemistry from the beginning and it's Absolutely. like- It translates lucky. 100%. Like I love the chemistry. My favorite are you guys playing together. Like it's fantastic. Um, one of my favorite episodes has to do with a, a grief retreat. Mm -hmm. I thought that was Great. such a dynamic episode. There was so much. So gross when I say that. I love it's it. So I love great. it so much. Great <laughs> retreat. I don't know why. Grief retreat. Yeah. Turned into that. I don't know. Grief retreat. Was that episode as fun to shoot as it was to watch? Because it, it really takes so you on a roller coaster. Fun. The whole thing. It really was fun because it was like we got to lighten up. Like really kind of have more of these lighter scenes until it then it's and dark then it, it gets it dark gets again dark. Yeah, it's like again. a roller coaster but it's okay but it was like we had the you know carry on oki happen then we had you know steve and we had brendan we had like it was yeah there was a lot and and, and i Alma my character singing. is oh, yeah. literally intoxicated the entire episode <laughs> yeah. just progressively so until it's just until there's a underlying of slurring and not being, you know, <laughs> lots of emotions. Yeah, it turns out Drunk Jen was a, was a very fun version of Jen. Jen, Jen <laughs> drunk Jen, Drunk Jen is hilarious. Um, so yeah, so <laughs> that was fun for me to play too. Like, I mean, obviously like getting to like, just progressively just get worse and worse and yeah. just the, the, really the episode opens choices. and she's on her second margarita. So, you know, yeah. and it's 11 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, so. so you can imagine what happens by like nine o'clock that night. <laughs> And there's a really serious conversation about the word poontang, which I appreciate it yeah. because I feel like it's just a really underutilized word. Also, that Thank conversation you. needed to be happening <laughs> for so it long. Needs to be ha yeah. It needs to happen. Everyone knows that. It's a That's long time I, coming. It was a groundbreaking moment coming. in television. Poontang. For me. Got it. Bing bong. That really means a lot. Yeah. Thank you so much. I just wanted you to feel honored. I do. I do. Um, it's so sweet. And while that episode is so funny, I really do think it. Uh, what I loved about it is it showed the different ways in which people grieve. Um, and in a funny way, in a serious way, it really it was like such an honest approach to grieving. So was that the intention? I mean, yes, that's the intention of the entire series is to show, you know, authentic, uh, the authentic process of going through grief and loss and frustration and, you know, all of that. And the episode was written by Abe Sylvia, who's just a wonderful writer and director. Um, and yeah, we definitely aimed to, well, we wanted them to have an escape from their everyday life and you know as as we all know like you can try to escape from whatever pain that you're in and you might be successful for like a few hours but it catches back up with you and you can't help it and that's sort of the point of the episode is like it, you can try yeah. but it's always like right there right behind you i'm curious how do you strike that balance between the humor and the drama because i said earlier it really is very well balanced and it's so hard to do you know, I, I think a lot of the credit is due to these two women. I mean, you know, wh what's on the page, you know, sometimes could seem like it was more dramatic or more funny, but because you have such incredible, authentic people playing those roles who really, really went there, uh, like, she's not kidding. Like, it would very often, it would be like, and then she cries. And they'd be like, oh, oh okay, well, guess I'm going to cry in this scene. Um, and so again, we'd be, uh, yeah. be like, I cry four times. I know. And I'd be like, I like get there really early in the morning. And it was like a scene that I'm not supposed to be crying. And they're like, can you, do you think we could go there? And I'm like, <laughs> but guys, you'll see it's why. You'll see 30 why. AM and I'm crying in a car. <laughs> but you know, they again, are, they are both just in, you're, you're just both really good 
comedic and dramatic actresses. And, you know, I think you will see like an incredible range that they both have that, um, you know, I, I knew that they were amazing. I was fans of, of, of theirs before we started this, but coming out of this and making the show with them, I, I'm so in awe of what they did. It's, it, it, really, it really is incredible. Right back at you. Christina, how do you get yourself to cry at six in the morning? <laughs> Um, luckily, the material just lent itself to that. You know, there were there were there were scenes that like it was just I didn't ha I don't never I think the secret to it is not to worry about if you are or you're not. You just have to be in the moment of what that character's feeling and going through. And um, you know, for instance, like in the one episode where the balloon comes down and you as the audience thinks that it's going to open and it's going to say she's going to find what you think she was what written, and then it opens and it says I want to play with you again and every time we shot that like I'm gonna cry now mm -hmm. every time we shot that and I opened that thing I I bawled my eyes out mm -hmm. there it was just it was in it's in the book you know what I mean it's already there so I just had to be really present and and then you know honor my honor Jen and what she's going through is that one of the reasons this was a project you wanted to do because you've you've had a very robust comedic um, you know, career. Mm -hmm. You've done some drama as well, but this is, you know, you really get to show those dramatic shots with this. I couldn't look at it as like a, a show that I want to do so that people saw my performance. Yeah. I just wanted to play Jen. Yeah. I wanted to live in her shoes. I wanted to go through her process and I wanted to work with these people. So it was really more, it wasn't like, you know, it, it, I don't choose things for like, what are everyone going to think? You know what I mean? Um, maybe I should, because <laughs> I've chosen some, some doozies. Um, but uh, but I, I choose things because I want the experience of what what it's, is being lent to me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and Linda, before we go to questions, I just have a question for you. Um, how does it feel to be undusted? Oh. <laughs> is that a spoiler? That's not right. I think so. Um, but you know, the movie came out, Avengers came out last week. And so if you haven't seen uh, it, that's on you. It's, uh, I've suddenly am in everything that you, that have spoilers everywhere. So it's like, I don't know how to talk about anything anymore. Uh, I know how to talk around everything. Um, it felt like that was just, it's gigantic, that yeah. whole experience. And the, they, they had the, the premiere at the convention center, which I'd never, at the last time I was there it was for an auto show. So it was, it was, uh, it was really, it's been really fun. That whole world is really incredible. And then to go from, you know, I did a horror movie that, that came out two weeks ago. The Curse of La Llorona then in theaters Endgame, now. Endgame, and then now this. In the past three weeks, there have been three things that I'm really proud of that, you know, and excited about how different they are from each other that, that came out. So it's been, a, it's been a fun run for me. Has that changed your fandom from, like, Freaks and Geeks to... Avengers, or is it the same people? Uh, the Avengers is a lot of people. <laughs> I don't know that anything has a fandom like that. That's like, it's pretty incredible. It's very impressive. I love my Freaks and Geeks fans, though. Yeah. They, are, they are true. <laughs> Before we go, there are some questions. So who do we have first? Hi, I'm Gloria Jules. Married with Children is the funniest show that I've seen. So uh, my question is for Christina. When you take a break from acting, what do you do when you for fun? Um, hang out with my daughter. Mm -hmm. That's all I care about. And that's why I took a break from, from series television. I always think like, yeah, I've kind of been like semi-retired, but I've done like seven movies in the last six years. So I wasn't, wow. I can't really like qualify as being retired, but um, I took things that I would only have to work a couple weeks because my daughter is like my life. So Understand. that's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What do you think uh, your character from that show would be doing now? <laughs> Kelly Bundy. Do we not mention the name? <laughs> yeah, that's um, right. What would she be doing now? Um, gosh, you know, I think about that, and I'm like, we well, could go with, like, the, you know, the stock answer that she's, like, you know, like, kind of haggy waitress, you know what I mean, <laughs> um, with, like, 12 kids, but I like to think that she might be a scientist. Hmm. Hmm. That's right. Okay. I like that a fan fiction. Idiot savant, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just a, like a, yeah, why not? She works at NASA. Uh, one question? Hi. Um, yes, my question's for Christina. And I was wondering, um, do you tend to, uh, I know you addressed this a little bit, but did you, do you tend to lean more towards comedy or do you kind of kind of get away from that on purpose or what I mean I love I love doing comedy I, I I really do I love I love being on a set when it's light all the time and it's really you know what I mean I mean I do love that I love getting a, like a, a a reaction I love hearing 
you know, giving you something good to, to feel. But I just like doing characters that I've never played, that I've never, that, that um, inspire me and um, confuse me. And so that's sort of what I've always done is shows and stuff that like with people that I think are amazing or in a character that is something that I'm unlike anything I've ever done. Well, I think you nailed it with this project, all of you did. I, I truly, sincerely enjoy this. I can't wait to get home and finish the last two episodes just so I know how this wraps up. Ooh. And I know, I'm so nervous. I'm just very nervous. Oh boy. Yeah, feel free to email. It's increasingly more intense oh, yeah. Nine and go, 10 guys. are yeah. intense. Nine. <laughs> Nine and 10 are very intense. And if, funny and fabulous. It's all of it, which is why it's a perfect show to binge. If you guys do want to binge, Dead to Me premieres on Netflix on May 3rd. Please put your hands together for Liz Feldman, Linda Cardellini, and Christina Applegate. 